Newborns straight from labor and delivery are covered in amniotic fluid, blood, vernix, any bacteria that can penetrate the placental barrier, and some can, and the bacteria they encountered in the birth canal if they were vaginally delivered. That means syphilis, spirochetes, or any other sexually transmitted infection could possibly be crawling over the surface of any unbathed newborn. Naturally, we touch them only with gloves before their baths. It can be a nightmare if an infection is spread through the newborn nursery. Many babies can be affected. To minimize this, the newborn nursery and neonatal ICU have the following rules. When you come in to work your shift, you must complete a three-minute scrub with your hands. You don't have to use the brush for it. Hands and soap, water are the ingredients you need. Scrub all the way up to and including the elbows since when you hold a baby to feed it, you're going to hold them in the crook of your elbow. Some hospitals have a newborn nursery where a baby is taken for a few moments after he spent some time with mom. There they measure, weigh the baby, and admit him to the hospital, do a quick head to toe. Other hospitals have a newborn nursery where they stay longer, they monitor the baby's temperature, and when the baby has reached a predetermined temperature, then they're bathed. At one hospital in Fort Worth, that magic temperature is 97.5, and another it's 98.0. So just check with your nursery staff. Once the baby has again reached the critical temperature after the bath, then the baby can be taken to mom. In other hospitals, the mom and baby are never separated. The baby is assessed and bathed in the private room with the mother present. ID bands are always important, but they're super important in regard to baby care. There are special ID bands that are part of a hospital-wide alarm system that may even lock the elevators and exit doors. The prevention of baby theft is the goal here. The ID band is attached in the room with mom present and is not removed until discharge. It is not foolproof, however. We have seen a case in which a young mother had come in to deliver. Her drug screen had been positive for an illegal drug. When that happens, CPS usually takes the baby at discharge and arrangements are made for baby's care. Knowing this, the young mother cut the strap holding it on the baby's ankle left the alarm ID band in the room and surreptitiously left the hospital. If anyone tries to abduct a baby, once a barrier is crossed, the alarm sounds. Each nurse has a post. Some go to the exits to detain anyone with a newborn and they will check bags and backpacks. Once the baby has been found, the alarm is cleared. We usually hear the alarm sound at least once during any given clinical rotation, and so far, it's always been a false alarm. The CNA or nurse has forgotten to disable the alarm at discharge, or a baby being taken to radiology or to some other department for a procedure hasn't had the alarm reset. It is always a big production, and the charge nurse has to fill out some sort of report on why it happened. Note the four expected outcomes of the recovery period for the newborn. Effective breathing, effective thermal regulation, freedom from infection, and the supplying of nutrition if needed during this period. We really try to get the baby to nurse from the mom while still in delivery room. If the baby is to be bottle fed and there are no problems, it will probably be after the recovery time in bath before he is fed. If suctioning is necessary, remember we suction the mouth first and then the nose. We've covered that before, but again, it often shows up on tests. Choking must be dealt with immediately by clearing the airway. Note the legal tip. The nurse is responsible to make sure that resuscitation equipment is available all of the time by the side of each infant. We talked a bit about cold stress in the last chapter, but it is always a concern. It increases the O2 and glucose demands of the infant. You will notice that immediately after birth, the infant is put under a radiant warmer and stays there until he reaches the temperature the hospital specifies. Round fat supply of larger babies protects them from cold stress, but all babies are susceptible. The sooner the newborn nurses, the better, because early feeding is the best way to present prevent hypoglycemia and hypocalcemia.
Note the similar signs and symptoms. Forceps and vacuum extractors are used to expedite delivery in some cases. They do increase the risk of injury and the benefits must outweigh these risks. They have been helpful and have probably saved the lives of many babies, but they can certainly cause some injuries, some of which are very serious, can result even in death.